All right. All right, guys, here we go. Uh, welcome, everybody. We want to welcome a new uh, member to the house. Mr. Uh, I shouldn't say Mr. I know better than that. Gary, as uh, uh, one of our subscribers, has actually made it uh, to the to the study group. Uh, for the last two weeks, anybody that has followed this channel or, or the work that has been done outside of this channel knows that I have paid a lot of uh, attention on a particular sect uh, of people and uh, really the religion. Uh, but today we're gonna we're gonna talk about how to rise above that and live within your spiritual nature. So let's let's bow our heads, dear Heavenly Father. I want to thank you for anointing this messenger with this message. Let your word not return unto you void, but let it accomplish that which you please and prosper in the thing where you sent it. May the seed fall on good ground and op open up the hearts and the minds of the people to accept this message. We have not the spirit of fear, but the spirit uh, of power, love, and sound mind. In your precious son's name we pray. All right, guys, the wisdom from above. Uh, the paradoxical quote that I'm about to say is something I thought of myself th this last week. And the... Uh, when I start looking at uh, quotes of uh, a paradoxical nature, they really open up your mind to a higher uh, plane of thought. Okay? So the wisdom from above, a paradox quote, the instant a man or woman says that they are humble or try, trying to obtain humility, they have at the same time admitted to their egotistical nature. Okay? And this is the battle. This is the, the battle within, right? That's the old man. Um, that's the split between the left and right hemisphere of our brains. Uh, and this is what we fight all the time. But let's, let's start this off. This is a scripture-based study today, guys. Uh, we're going to hit the scriptures pretty hard. And what I hope to do today, uh, I have given enough uh, bad information the last two weeks. And what I want to do is uh, uh, come back and give some good information um, and give some people some hope. And, uh, you know... We can't run around scared, but we have to know the, the reality in which we live in. So discussion. First off, I want to give thanks to the opportunities that have been provided for this channel and its growth. I want to thank Richie from Boston, who showed an abnormal amount of humility in giving me the opportunity to lead an entire live stream on this channel. And I'll let everybody know out here, here and out there in YouTube land. Uh, Richie, from the very moment he, he started texting me this week, said, hey, dude, I just want you to come on my channel and tell the truth. I'll sit back and not say a word. And uh, I'm telling you, folks, uh, right now, whatever you think of Richie, he does know that what he has done is a, an extreme risk. Okay? Whether what, And uh, as do I. And now my face is out there to, what, 50,000, 60,000 more viewers than what I have. And I mean every word I said um, this week. Silence in the face of evil is evil in itself. And we have to move past this, this, uh, this wall that we're, we're, we're living in because we've caged ourselves in. So today we will focus on how to live without fear when we come to a knowledge of the truth. You know, I see people, uh, it, I, I read a lot of um, comments and things of that nature and people asking, what can we do, what can we do? Well, first off, you, it, the different mindset starts, okay? This is a different mindset than living in blissful ignorance, but a mindset where we recognize the only control we have. And what is that, guys? Who do we have control over? That's right. So if you were to change anything, how, how are you going to first start changing it? That's right. Okay. Very good. Very good. Fear has no place in our hearts. And it is fear that stops decent men and women from coming forward with the truth. But it is also fear that traps us within the confines of our own minds and inhibits us from staying in a higher-minded state. And with that, let us begin, folks. Let's take this journey together. All right, James 3, we'll start in James. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. And this is the envying and strife, okay? That wisdom's from down here, okay? Uh, 
we'll see this time and time again where people uh, attack the man instead of the information. Uh, it happens over and over again. You know, the first thing they do, you're going to hell, blasphemer or whatever. They attack the man, not the information. Uh, the wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and evil work. So the very first thing that's happened, one of the one of the most profound things that is happening within our culture today, is this inability for men and women to debate. And a debate is set up for two opposing viewpoints, bringing facts and things together and debating it out on why it is this way or that way. Well, we can't do that anymore. Everything's emotionally based. Hey, you offended me. You messing up my worldview. I hate you. Huh. James 3.17, But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, for the mercy and good fruits without partiality. We did this uh, study a while back about the st uh, sin of partiality, and that's what I focused on at that point in time. Uh, but we're not doing that, that study today. We're focusing on peace and without hypocrisy. Sounds easy. Sounds real easy, doesn't it? But first in instinct is to attack the man who has offended you. And who am I speaking about right here? Anybody guess? Speaking about me. Here we go, guys. The test of faith, James 1-2. We're going backwards. I find that this works a lot. I, I, sometimes I read uh, uh, the chapters backwards. You know, just some, something that I do sometimes. My brethren, count it in all joy when you fall into diverse. That's what divers means. Many temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But the, let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. I'm going to focus you on one, three, four a second. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. So an outside enemy, the very first thing they're going to do is test your what? Faith. They're going to come at you spiritually. That's what they do every time. That's how they do it. That's how it works. And you have to be cognizant of this. Um, so for, for me... Um, I try to when, when I have a difference of uh, outlook or whatever with people commenting on YouTube I'm trying to get to the point where I just say I leave you in peace and why is that? anybody know? anybody remember? agree with thine adversary uh -huh. we're going to get to that if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of Yahuwah that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Let him ask in faith, no, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a way of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. That's double-mindedness, unstable in all your ways. Um, here's wisdom that is hard to obtain, because only through patience, thinking before reacting, can we actually obtain this state of mind of perfect patience? And uh, I'm not telling anyone out there that it's easy. Let's go see what uh, Yahushua has to say about it. Luke 21, 15. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And you shall be betrayed both by parents, brethren, Ken folks, friends, and some of you shall uh, they they cause to be put to death, and you shall be hated of all men, for my name's sake. But there shall not a hair on, on your head perish. In your patience, patience is that important? Possess you your souls. Huh. Wow. And you know, one of these things. If I will give you a mouth and wisdom. Um, one of these things that happens when I start uh, doing these episodes is I remember things that I I forget during the week that I wanted to put in here, but it always comes back. It always comes back in the middle of me talking um, and thinking it out. And I know where it comes from. It comes from above. 
It is the wisdom from above. It can't. There's no way a simple man, a ninth grade dropout, a convicted criminal, a, a twice convicted uh, felon, uh, could have ever put this this reality, any glimpse of it, together without some assistance. It's just too much. And as a matter of fact, you couldn't deal with the truth without being spiritually in tune. It's too much. It'll drive you completely crazy. You have to have something else to lean on. Agree with thine adversary. James 3.18 And the fruit of righteousness, righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. This lesson today is about where I fall short. But I hope that by looking within at my old man, someone else out there will be assisted. I leave you in peace should be the reply I leave to every naysayer. If I even reply. What's the first instinct of my mind when somebody leaves those crazy comments and everything else? To back. Defend myself. Mm -hmm. right. Defend myself. What's the truth? What's the reality? I've laid everything out on the line. Everything I believe is in what? Video form. There it is. Every, every, for every single avenue that I've ever uh, told to anyone else is laid out in what we call vlogs, video logs, presentational forms. I've left no, uh, nothing unturned. So why should I defend myself? Well, did the naysayer do the same thing? No, they never do. They never will. Instead of arguing with someone who is focused on attacking the man instead of the information, and that's one thing they never do, that's never happened, is they go, this is where you're wrong, this is where you're wrong. No, this is, that's not how it works. You know, that's, that's not how it works. There's a few of them out there who've tried, uh, and then when I gave them the reasons why I thought what I, I said, they find excuses to not look into it. Um, and everybody here knows, uh, when we started out here three years ago, I was sitting right right here in this living room and preaching uh, that a totally different way, and I shouldn't say preaching, but teaching um, and educating and sharing a totally different way. I have grown as the study has grown. And that's the true mark of a man seeking spiritual enlightenment. He's seeking the Father. These things are going to happen if you keep seeking the truth because what does the truth force you to do? It forces you to change yourself. This is called debate when you, when you exchange information and exchange viewpoints. Uh, the mentally stable, men of sound mind, the sujuris can do this. It is the non compass mentis, the men and women of unsound mind, that are reactionary. When I start arguing with a fool, those viewing from the outside, what do they see? Two fools arguing. <laughs> honor, dishonor. We've talked about this over and over again, and I want to throw this in here. for the, We have a lot of new uh, subscribers. They don't quite understand or recognize what this is right here. The honor, dishonor, and how we stay uh, afloat when we uh, when we brought up against these uh, judges and mag well they're not judges magistrates uh, and how the offer counter offer works and agree with thine adversary. Of course, we will expound on this topic in the future. I want to give somebody a little something to think think about. So John fourteen. So now we're gonna now we're gonna get into some a little bit deeper concepts. One of the things this study tries to focus on is concepts, and of course, that's the logos, right? It's the logos. It's the point of it. It's conceptual, like conceptualization. Get through my redneck uh, stutter there. But what happens is, is most men and women today don't have the necessary uh, tools to even decipher something so so simple, okay? And then use logic to deduce what is being said. All right, John 14, 26, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. Who's sending it? All right. He shall, he, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. 
whatsoever I have said uh, unto you. This is a great scripture right here. It's one of my favorite now. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. You see how... Let's see the compound. Okay? In order for you to have this peace, you have to be what? can't be afraid. You're not going to obtain the peace if you're in fear. It's impossible. Not going to be not going to happen. That's that's why these scriptures are written the way they are. John 14:28, you have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, you would rejoice because I said I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. Hold on. What what was just said? My Father is greater than I. So let's do this. Let's do this conceptualization. Let's let's find a, a higher plane. Okay, Yahushua is the way, the redemption, the Savior, the Messiah. That's our Messiah, plain and simple. The Jews are waiting on their Mashiach, right? All right. Who is the supreme God? Yahuwah, the Father. Okay? The Father couldn't be on a cross and die for three days. Do you understand that? Okay? It's impossible. The Father is all life. You can't subtract or add from it. I mean, add to it. He is, he is creation. Outside, holy, holy, holy. Set apart. The finite will never completely understand the infinite. Okay? These, are, these concepts people have to start uh, understanding. Reading comprehension is paramount to recognizing the concepts, logos, that Yahushua was trying to teach. This is how important language is. And I did, I focused on this last week with, uh, uh, with how the, the, they are boxing us into corners with uh, our ability to use language to nonviolently act out against. Uh, the crimes being perpetuated against us. It is important enough that the controllers have made it a priority to remove our ability to read and comprehend what we're looking at or what we're reading. Wouldn't you say that's a pretty important goal? If they've made it a priority, if they've made it a priority, that means it's important. All right. Love this little quote right here. Fire is the test of gold, adversity of strong men. John 16, 31, Yahushua answered them, Do you now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that you shall be scattered, and every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. John 16, 33, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world... You shall have what? Tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Luke 1, 7, 9. To give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Hmm. So how is it in our current situation Knowing the world around us and what, what is happening, what is transpiring, are you able to obtain peace? What do you think? What do you think, Jesse? Through any fear. There you go. That's one. Good, Gary. Very good. Very good. All right, we're going to answer this question. The world can't have peace, so quit expecting it to. It's impossible. Why? Why can't the world have peace? Too much strife. Okay, so without being spiritually in tune, let's talk about this concept. All right. Before, let, let's speak, let me speak from the first person perspective because that's the best way, uh, whiz, that's the best way experience is uh, the best way to speak of it. Okay, so before I ever got in touch with my spiritual nature and un recognizing that there was something greater than me, 
The only thing in the world that mattered was what? Me. I was this little mini-me Satanist. So as the world is only focused on itself, they can never have peace because their hearts are wicked. It's in counter it's in counter distinction to what the Father wants for us, okay? So let's do this together. The world cannot have peace, but you can. Isaiah 26, 3. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Isaiah 32, 17. And the work of the righteousness shall be peace, and the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. Malachi 2, 5. My covenant was with him of life and peace, and I gave to him for the fear wherewith he feared me and was afraid before my name. The law of truth was in his mouth, and lawlessness and equity was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity and did turn many away from lawlessness. The perfect law of liberty comes not from man but from the Father. This is one of the deepest programmings. I'm going to speak on this for a minute, and I'm not going to expound on this too much further. This is one of the deepest programmings uh, and indoctrination tools that I've seen so far, and I've been able to unravel uh, myself, and I did it, as a matter of fact, on um, The Truth Shall Set You Free, the video I did eight, nine months ago. That was me breaking through a program, indoctrination. I have witnessed within the Christian face. We would rather live under the tyranny of men instead of doing the will of our Father. I could be mistaken, but isn't that the reason for the fall? Good question, right? Hmm. It's just something to think about. You know, it's... uh. Every time we do it, do it, put our own will above the, his will, same thing goes bad. I'm just saying. We'll expound on that. In. Is this inner peace or outer peace? If you start inward, all right. Let's do let's do this again. Most men and women today are looking what they think the outside is going to make them happy. All right, the material things, uh, Jesse. You had to have a brand new car. How do you feel about that today? I have a lot of inner destruction from that. <laughs> okay. But we think... Well, that's right. That's right. That's right. And because we are trained to believe that these outside influences are going to make us happy. It never... And okay, this is where... That's right. It's greed, gluttony, and all these things come from this... This concept, this mindset that you, the more junk you have, the happier you're going to be. Listen, folks, I make the least amount of money I've ever made in my life today. I have the least amount of things I've ever had in my life today. And guess what? I am the happiest I've ever been. <laughs> it's just that simple. I give more today than I ever would have given when I was making those, uh, you know, 150, 160,000 a year, whatever. I was making the big money on the turnarounds all over the country. I give more away today than I ever would have done then. All right, Psalm 34, 14. So we answered that question. It starts within. Why does it start within, though? The kingdom of heaven's where? That's right. That's right. That's right. There we go. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Psalm 35, 20, for they speak not peace, but they devise deceitful matters against them that are quiet in the land. That's the counter distinction to depart from evil. They can't speak peace. They can't do anything about peace. They are wicked and deceitful in their hearts. And the only thing they care about is themselves. Psalm 37, 11, but the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Huh. Psalm 37, 37. Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright. For the end of that man is peace. And 
I, I wrote here, let us discuss ourselves among ourselves for a second before we move on, but we did that at the beginning of the slide. You see, what has happened is we rushed through these, these scriptures, and what we're not um, actually seeing are the spiritual truths within them. Every night, every single night, I go to sleep with a set of scriptures on. Every night, every night, every single night, I think uh, the James scriptures in here today. The James scriptures, do you see them on my board? Do you see them on my board? There's no James scriptures up there. Why is James in the study? Because I fell asleep with James last night. I listened to the book of James and I was like, man, this, this, is, this makes more sense to what I want to do than what I had up there. And it, it but really, I've read the book of James a thousand times. You can catch spiritual truths every single time you open the book. It will open itself, reveal itself to you. And for those on the outside looking in, I had a comment today from a guy. Uh, you know, he said, you can't, I can't believe you don't understand the Council of Nicaea. Yes, I do understand what happened at the Council of Nicaea. Do I think we have all the scriptures and it's a perfect collection? No. Can't be. Why? Hey, they've just removed the name, the actual name of uh, Yahuwah already. That right there tells you it's it's an errant uh, scriptures already. The fact that it's been translated, okay? The fact men haven't been involved with translating makes it what? With error. So anybody having to push this, it's totally inerrant, really isn't being honest with themselves. But here's, here's the fact that I do know because I have studied these, these scriptures for the last uh, six years. Within the book is enough spiritual truths to get you to where you need to go. And that's a fact, Jack. Alright. The more at peace and humble we become within, the more emblazoned. This is a paradox too. This is one of those paradoxes now. The more emblazoned we become to actually act out to injustice and immorality. It's a paradox. Why? I'll tell you why. The peace comes from the Father, as does the humility, knowing your place in the universe. Knowing our place and who and what we are and being able to live with that and having the peace and humility allows you to see the world as it is. And once we see the world as it is, it gives us the, the willpower to act out against all Im immorality and all injustice. And I'll give you a perfect example of that coming up in this next slide. Who is the most peaceful man to ever, uh, the pe most peaceful, peaceful person to ever live on earth? Yahushua HaMashiach. Then what happened right here? Let's read this together. John 2.13 When the Jews' Passover was at hand, Yahushua went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers, changers of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, what's that, whips? Made himself some whips. He drove them all out of the temple and the sheep, the oxen, and poured out the money, uh, changers' money and overthrew the tables and said, said unto them that sold doves, Take these things hence, make not my father's house and house of mar merchandise. Huh. What would happen tomorrow if men and women quit bickering over everything that they're different about and come together on what they're, they have in common? What would happen? The system would fail the system would completely stop running. The con would be over. And men and women thinking their domesticated cattle would be over. We give them our power, we give them our authority, and wonder why they treat us like dogs. Matthew 10, 13, And if the house be worthy, let your peace come unto it, upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return unto you. It's a paradox too, right? There's a reason why I've been focusing on paradox quotes 
the last few weeks because I'm going to I'm going to inform uh, men and women now these higher spiritual truths you'll start noticing these and then you'll think about how the concept works out and why it works and when you think of beyond that surface level you'll start seeing it, the logos you'll see it the wicked of heart can have no peace Isaiah 48:22 there's no peace saith uh, uh, saith Yahuwah unto the wicked we're going to expound on that a few times in this study because I want you to see that it's not just in one place I found uh, Psalm 9 and 10 very good thou hast rebuked the heathen thou hast destroyed the wicked thou hast put uh, out their name forever and ever Yahuwah is known by the judgment with which he ex executeth the wicked is snared in the work of his own hands Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget Yahuwah. The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. The, the devices of our own imagination. Man, we have imagined the vain thing, haven't we? Have we not? You know, there's going to be a lot of people, that, uh, men and women, that come to this channel and for the first time ever uh, glimpse, uh, uh, get a glimpse at the reality and just how far the wool has been pulled over our eyes uh, with the, the corporations and the, the fact that we walk around believing we're something that we aren't and not have any clue why the Ten Commandments are there to expose that fraud and has been there the entire time. It's amazing. When you just think about just how well just the Ten Commandments themselves expose this reality, that's pretty amazing. All right, the wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Did that one, uh, Psalm 10.3. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire and blesseth the covetous whom the uh, Yahuwah abhorreth. Psalm 10.4. The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after Yahuwah. Yahuwah is not in his thought in his thoughts at all. You see what you see this? Are we starting to see why it makes a difference? And why we can't seek uh, the peace of the world, but the peace is within. And we can't have fear. We have to have power, sound, and uh, and love. Pow, pow. Oh, come on, Brandon. Tumbling. What separates the weak from the tares, guys? Love, power, and a sound mind. What separates the weak from the tares? Anybody? Psalm one nineteen fifty three. Horror hath taken hold upon me because of the wicked that forsake thy law. The bands of the wicked have robbed me, but I have not forgotten thy law. The wicked have waited for me to destroy me, but I will consider thy testimonies. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I, I erred not from thy precepts. And what's precepts? Spiritual uh, conceptions. Conceptualation. The logos. <laughs> you know, you go really go look at this word, and I almost put it in this study. One of the things that makes me angry is how they ruin our, our language. As a matter of fact, I'll, t I'll talk about it right now that my mind's thinking about it. You know, I was digging, digging the other day uh, looking at some root words. One of those root words is Rhea. Anybody know what Rhea means? It's R-R-H-E-A. Well, let me go ahead and give you three words. Logorrhea, diarrhea, and gonorrhea. Okay? It's three words. Can you figure out with the, the base words that you have now what it actually means, Rhea? Rhea means excessive. That's why you have diarrhea. Excessiveness from the diaphragm, okay? Logo is excessive talking. Um, these root words really make a, a, a difference. And of course, gonorrhea, we're gonna, you're going to get into sexually transmitted disease, diseases. The con concepts, though, the logos, 
this is extremely important in moving forward. We hear people say it all the time, I have trouble reading the Bible. Well, yeah, that's everybody who starts out first. We don't have anything to base our, our, our knowledge base to, to start uh, building on these spiritual concepts. We have nothing to compare it to. Absolutely nothing. I'm going to put that in the next study, though. I've got, some, I've got a place I'm going to go with that logo, Rhea, by the way. I'm not going to ruin it. Uh, the wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I erred not from thy precepts. Thou puttest away all the wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore, therefore I love thy testimonies. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they seek not thy statutes. What separates the wheat from the tares is men and women stop doing their own will and put the will of the Father ahead of themselves. That's the true sign of humility. That's the true sign of peace. And it's a true sign of not, not even longer being wicked. Not as the world giveth, my friends. It starts right here. Within here. That's where it starts. Isaiah 59, 7. Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of inequity. Wasting and destruction are in their past. The way of peace they know not. And there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Path of the crooked can't be straightened. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. You know, that's one of those things. Um, let me speak from my own perspective again. So I was diagnosed as having ADHD. Extreme bouts of it, right? I may, may be a slightly uh, hyperactive more than uh, most people. Um, but the results of the drugs are evident, what they did to me. And uh, what, it, what it really did uh, was I didn't have any peace, so I couldn't sit still. I couldn't, couldn't think properly. And that's because I was on the what? It's on that crooked path. It's not until you get over here to this inner peace can the things within us start being fixed. Uh, exa great examples right across the way here with Choi. Choi, you becoming more peaceful living with yourself? Yeah. It happens. Can you go sit in your house a couple hours by yourself and not, not have to go drink? Yeah. It happens, folks. Isaiah 59, 9, Therefore is judgment far from us, neither doth justice, justice overtake us. We wait for light, but behold obscurity, for brightness, but we walk in darkness. He's talking about the crooked path. We grope for the wall like the blind, and we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as, it, as in the night. We, in, we are in desolate places and dead men. I'm going to expound on that in a later study, by the way. Because y'all know that has something to do uh, with our current reality too, right? We walk around not knowing who or what we are. We think we're per persons. We think we're people. All these different things. We'll, 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 we'll keep expounding on that too. I'm not going to ruin this study. This is a good spiritual study. Humility and peace. 20, uh, Matthew 23, 8. Be you not called rabbi. So this is a personal pet peeve I have in me, and I ask people again, uh, I'm, I'm not your preacher. I'm not, your t I'm not a teacher. The Word teaches. I just compile information that was once we once knew, and I put it together uh, and share it. Uh, but it does make me uneasy to see people uh, praising me too much. And why is that? So let's, let's speak about the old man within. Why is that? Why would I, I, I not, not enjoy that? Well, let me be frank, uh, candid. The flesh within me likes it. The flesh within me likes it. That's the truth. 
so it makes me uneasy. Why? Because I don't want to be a rock star. I just want to be Brandon. And I don't want anything to change me from, from what I'm doing. So it does make me uneasy. But it's this inspection of one on self, right? There's the paradox right there. What am I admitting to by trying to become humble? I'm admitting to my e egotistical nature. These paradoxes are pretty cool. Once you grasp them, they're pretty cool. All right, be you not called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, for all you are what? Brothers. Brothers and sisters in Christ. Got Gary written down as uh, uh, Gary, my brother. That way I know who he is. It's different from the other five Garys that I have. So, and call no man your father upon the earth. For one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be you called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is his greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. There's another paradox. You seeing it yet? Are y'all seeing why I'm bringing up paradoxes? Can you see the paradox right here? Once you find that inner, inner humility and peace, well, what happens is he makes you higher. Because you stop doing your own will. And just like I said earlier, when I had a bunch, I never gave anything. Now I have nothing. And what happens? I give more. <laughs> If, if society uh, as, a, as a whole knew these spiritual truths, where would we be as a society? Certainly be better off. Well, yeah. That's how you know who's in control. If higher-minded men and women were really running this country and everything was done for the, the good of the people that you hear about, well, it'd be self-evident. The truth is self-evident, folks. The reality is, is right in front of you. You have to put the, the scales over your eyes and lie to yourself to not see the truth. The man living it only in the flesh cannot, cannot obtain this peace. James 4, 5 do you think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit dwelleth, dwelleth in us, lust is to the envy? Think so? James 4, 6, But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, Yahuwah resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Huh. That's kind of strange. You know, what I find out is that when you say you can admit you don't know a thing, <laughs> it's bad. What's he doing? I kind of lost my train of thought there. But he giveth more grace without, wherefore he saith, uh, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. That's another paradox too. All right, submit yourself, uh, yourselves therefore to Yahuwah, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to Yahuwah, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. It's one of these, this is another paradox right here, right? If you think you're proud, and this happens, I, I'm catching my train of thought back up before the interruption, that God resists the proud. What happens to those who are offended by the truth, especially people who profess they are of the faith? What happens? Bow. Bam. Jesse, you're doing good, brother. I'm proud of you, man. Good job, man. First thing they do, right, is they damn uh, out of one uh, side of their mouth, uh, they they praise the Father, and out of the other side, they what? Curse their brethren. Remember the, uh, the parable 
Remove the moat. Luke, remove the log out of thine own eye before you start judging. Before you worry about the moat in your brother's eye. Humility says, I should say what? Well, in confrontation with thine adversary. I leave you in peace. Because a fool is not going to listen. So if I argue with a fool, what's, going, what's happening? I've lowered myself down. All right, so discussion. What most of us seek is someone who confirms our already formed opinions. That's the easy route. That's the easy route. That's what we we look for on YouTube and all these other platforms. We go searching out people that think exactly like we do. What's wrong with that? It's called spiritual stagnation. And it's called confirmation bias. We should always challenge ourselves. You know, men and women who aren't willing to challenge what they believe really don't have a great faith in what they believe in. Think about that for a second. What are they afraid of? Huh. Instead of challenging ourselves like we should, we seek out confirmation bias. Folks, I know it's uh, the fear of learning these new concepts is there uh, for some people, but I, I promise you, once you come to this thought process, uh, nobody can shake you from this foundation of, of knowledge. It can't be. Nobody can come in here and tell me that what I'm seeking is not greater than me. It, it's just, it can't happen. The battle is within. And how do I know that? How do, how do I know that to be a fact? That's why the programming programming is aimed at your subconscious. Did I write it up here? There it is. I probably put it in here. Did I put it in here? Yeah, I did. The battle is within. And it really is training our conscious mind to maintain control over our subconscious. Why is that? Where's the programming at? It's in our subconscious, right? The subconscious is the one who breaks in and interrupts. He's the one that breaks in and interrupts when we're trying to focus. He's the one that breaks in while you're trying to read your Bible, and he says, "Oh, remember that? Remember that? Remember that time we went swimming in the river 15 years ago with little Johnny? Hey, where'd that come from? You know, that's that's the subconscious. Okay, the battle's within, and it is really training our conscious mind to maintain control over our subconscious, who always the subconscious." always seeks the what? The easy route. Because it is the part of the brain where all the programming is. That's why the subliminal programming is in your is in your multiple overlays on the digital TV. All these things. That's why it's there. It's to program you into it's there in your subconscious whether you like it or not. The kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent taketh it by force. They are wicked in all their ways. We did a study a while back, peace, peace, there can be no peace, right? That was focused on what? That was focused on the world, right? I think it is, it is paramount that I do, I do this study now. I see a lot of people upset about finally coming to a realization uh, who and what the Jews are. And fearing what may or may not be coming in the in, in the coming days. Don't worry about that, folks. It the the Creator will rectify everything on His schedule. Make no mistake about that. <laughs> it's just make no mistake. It's on His timeline. <laughs> the kingdom of heaven resides within the temples of your head. If you seek perfection within men. You will always be disappointed. But being focused on truth and he who has no variableness nor sign of turning, you will find that the most imperfect people can what? They can assist you in your journey. I am anyway. 
Maybe there's something wrong with me. Maybe even peculiar. I'm just saying. We will close today, uh, my friends. Uh, 1 Peter 2 9, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Odd, strange, and set apart people. Unlike, unblemished from the what? From the world, unspotted from the world. That you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of Yahuwah, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from flesh, fleshly lust, which war against the soul. Hey man, we'll rush through that, right? We'll bypass this up. There's a, there's a path of peace and humility, and there's a path of, path of wickedness and what? Flesh. Living in the flesh, the old man that war against the spirit within. I look forward to doing more live streams in the future, and I will, uh, I'm going to try to make a backup channel in the next few days. There's only one thing I want to really touch on out there um, for men and women to see this week for critical thinking, and I'm going to, uh, and that's the Greta kid on Twitter before closing out. Let's go do that real quick. Let's see. Let's do it. I've got the video up. Friends, we are living through some very scary times. Huh. It Is there a reason why they start off with scary? Because it gets people's attention. That's right. Tension's well up. Fear-based, fear-based, trauma-based mind control. Okay? That's how it works. It's trauma-based mind control. All right. So now, most men and women are going to argue about the right and the left and everything else, but really, what's going on here with this child? It's a propaganda piece, but also, how does a 12-year-old have any, any, any experience to talk about what she's talking about? And how come she's sitting inside the United Nations and all these other places like she's some type of authority? Well, that lets you know, folks, you're living in a banana republic. It's a banana republic. It's the show, folks. It's the show. That means she's got major backing. Major backing. And the masses, the masses are so dumbed down and ignorant, they can't pay attention. So let's see who she really works for. Y'all want to? Kind of too expensive to deal with climate change. I mean... It is, the money is there. If we can save the banks, if, then we can save the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, we know who she works for, folks. It's a shame. This is your reality. Uh, be aware. Stay vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, roaming around. Seeking whom he may, he may devour. Let's bow our heads. Let's bring this thing out. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for bringing us uh, together again and welcome uh, Gary into our home. Let your word not return unto thee void, but let it accomplish that which you please and prosper in the thing where you sent it. Grant us peace and humility. In your precious Son's name we pray. What did I do with that? There it is.